far as Micron goes, I, I think people have been all really concerned about softening pricing. I think the bottom line for the, 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 the memory manufacturers is that there's a lot more discipline, there's a lot more of a rational approach to profitability as opposed to just controlling market share. So I, I think people have been in the past tended to overreact in, in Micron, and maybe that was the right thing to do in the past in a couple cycles but right here you know i just think micron is is ultimately um a, a more of a commoditized stock with a hell of a amount excuse me a heck of a lot of upside oh. um if you actually think that the cycle is still with us his point to micron is we saw a massive massive shift down lower when the cycle from the time it began to, to when it actually ended so i look at some of these names that have already been i think really i don't want to use the word de-risk but sold off dramatically semi-cab equipment names in particular you could see a trading bounce here it's going to fake the street out because i still think there's more downside risk to go in those particular names. However, I look at a name like AMD, and I'd say AMD is trading at a, at a very, I know people look at the move it's had and say, it's a crazy move higher. There is a name that people are ultra focused, not on 2018 and 19 earnings, they're focusing out to 2020 because of the market share steal that they're gonna get or gain that they're gonna get from Intel. So I think AMD and pullbacks, that's a name you wanna stick with. Micron's a really specific, uh, it's a good example to talk about what retaliation means in a trade war, right? Because Micron makes mm -hmm. a lot of their chips here in the US, right? So this is kind of a two pronged sort of thing. When you talk about what the supply chain looks like in the inputs that go into computers and they go into servers and they go into smartphones, um, it's a two way street here. So to me, I think what's really important about Micron is that this is the most cyclical company. I heard Jim Cramer say something about trading at four times earnings. That's for a reason, okay? You don't buy it because you think it's a cheap value. You buy it because you think it's on the cusp of the cycle. And if the cycle turns, we know what happens. At the end of 2014 to its lows in 2016, the stock sold off 75%. And I think what's really important about these semi downgrades over the last couple days. It's a combination of maybe a lighter supply, or excuse me, a tighter supply and a little less demand. And you put those things together and you don't want to own a stock that trades at four times earnings that's up, you know, 3,000% over the last, you know, couple of years. Right. Back in May, Micron reports earnings, right? Great earnings report, but what stuck to me was the fact that they announced a $10 billion stock buyback starting in September. I said on the show that night, that says to me they're no longer going to be a cyclical business. They have visibility. This is a great sign for the company. They've made the turn. Stock went from 47 to 60. It's basically given the entire move back. I was clearly wrong in that assumption. I think people are coming around to the fact that maybe the demand isn't there, and maybe these Chinese tariffs, which may or may not come, is a bigger deal than the market gives it credit for.